Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this class on concrete parking structures. I'm Dilip Khatri. I'm a structural engineer in Los Angeles, and I put this class together to discuss specifically concrete parking structures, both above ground and subterranean structures, that I've observed in the Los Angeles area having significant issues with respect to cracking and long-term deterioration. And I'm going to point out some of the key issues that I found in examining these structures and how we evaluate them, and particularly for owners to determine whether or not those structures are safe to be occupied. So the outline for today's talk, we're going to skip over a number of things here, but we're going to discuss the background a little bit about concrete parking structures, what kind of concrete structures there are, reinforced versus pre-stressed, the governing building codes, and then we'll do a little bit of engineering overview on how these structures behave, and we'll take a look at the fundamental uh, elements that support a concrete parking structure, and then what are the problems, practical design issues, the concrete damage, water damage, water leakage, cracking, and creep. So why did I put this class together? Because I was out, I'm out looking at these structures all the time, and here's an example. So here's a structure built approximately in the 1970s, and what you can see here is you see a total delamination of the concrete. You can actually see the rebar. And what's happened, when you look at the slide very closely, is you'll see that the rebar is actually corroding. And this is a very dangerous situation because this is happening in the mid-span area. And what's going to happen eventually is that this uh, rebar is going to delaminate and it's going to cause the entire structure to deflect. And this happened... This, we've had this situation on multiple structures. Here are some other slides on the same structure. And then, when you look at the way the when the, where the beams are, I see these kinds of cracks. You see this crack over here. This is a column over here. And this is a gap inside of the, where the two beams meet. And you have this shear crack that's developing right along the edge. A very dangerous location to have a crack. Concrete parking structures are very commonly used in Southern California and in other parts of the country. And the way they're used is they are supporting usually three or four stories up above, just using a rough sketch here, of apartments or condos. The apartments or condos are above this portion, which is the concrete parking structure. And this portion down here is the concrete part. And going up here is the wood frame part. And in some cases, owners will have a courtyard. I didn't draw that in the sketch here, but they'll put a courtyard. I'll show you an example of one. Here's a courtyard, very nice looking courtyard. It has a walkway, it has planting, it has soil. They'll put a courtyard on top of this parking structure. There's two stories of parking underneath here. And what happens is the water has no way to drain from these uh, landscape zones. It will leak through the cracks in the concrete. And what happens on the underside of the deck? You get this. You get water seeping through and causing all this delamination. These are actually been epoxy filled over many, many years but it damages the concrete and it causes the delamination that I showed you earlier. And over several years, it'll look like this. It'll keep on leaking and then it eventually leaks on the cars. And what they don't understand is that the landscaping, I mean, granted that the landscaping is very beautiful, but the weight of the soil and the water is quite heavy. So let me first talk about that. If we put landscaping, dirt, up on top of this parking structure, if you create a mezzanine area, let's say this is a planter, okay? A planter with 12 inches of soil, okay? The weight of the soil, the density of the soil is approximately 110 pounds per cubic foot. That's when it's dry. When it's wet, it goes up to 125 pounds per cubic foot. So what does that mean? If I have 12 inches of soil, I'm adding up to 125 pounds per cubic foot. 
Why is that important? Because the density of concrete is 150 pounds per cubic foot. I want you to think about that for a second. 125 versus 150. You are adding with 12 inches of soil almost the weight of the concrete. It's almost like you're adding a concrete layer on top of your deck. And people underestimate that. They think, oh, it's just dirt. It's not a big deal. Um, it is very much a big deal. And so not something to be taken lightly, especially if the deck was not designed for it. So concrete parking decks are constructed of several systems. And the most common is the use of columns with flat plate slabs. You have your column. And you have your flat plate slab. So all of these loads from your two or three stories up above, they come down. What's the load path? It goes from the flat plate slab and it goes into the columns. So the columns are taking that load and then those go through the soil into a footing, some kind of footing. The flat plate slab system, which could be either, uh, normally the thickness of this slab is anywhere from five inches to eight inches. Some cases it might be as big as 12 inches, but most of the time it's five to eight inches. It's not very thick. It may have a system of beams. So how does this deflect? So your parking is down here, your three-story structure or whatever is up on top, bringing all these loads down. How does it deflect? It deflects like this. It, it has a sag in the middle and it sags in the middle. The cracking that occurs in the center are flexural cracks. If we take a cylinder of concrete and we apply a compressive load on it, this is just straight concrete, a concrete cylinder, and we put it in a lab and then we apply a compressive load on it the concrete is going to behave as such. I'm going to put a load up here, P, and as, I, as it compresses, I'm going to measure the deflection, delta. The concrete behaves something like this. It starts off with deflection, deflection, and then it'll reach an ultimate point, eventually cracking, and then it will collapse. This is called a stress strain curve. And concrete, when it cracks, the, the time from when it starts to crack until the failure can be very, very short. In other words, it can crack and it can fail very quickly. So what we've done on these structures is we've put steel and what happens is that when that crack starts to develop, the stress gets transferred from the concrete to the steel. As a matter of fact, the minute it starts to crack, the steel takes over. And the reason we've done that is that we want the concrete to crack. It's actually designed to crack. And the reason we've designed it to crack is that we want that concrete to crack so that the beam will exhibit a deflection and it'll crack really badly before it fails. And that's done on purpose because we want the structure to give us a warning. We want it to tell us. We don't want it to not crack and then all of a sudden fail because that's very dangerous. So we've actually designed our codes to behave that way. So when I go look at a structure, when I go look at a parking structure and I see damage like this, where this crack is starting to develop, it doesn't tell me that I have to evacuate the structure. It just tells me something's happening. It tells me, hey, this is starting to deflect. But it gives me sufficient warning. If it starts to deflect too much, then that's telling me that it's coming close to the proximity of failure. And so these are the signs. These are the signs that I look for when I go and look at these buildings. And where are those cracks going to develop? The most critical zone is in the center, where the slab is at the mid-span. 
and the other zone is at the beam column connections, at the ends, because the two highest stress zones are in the center and at the ends. And so if I see cracking occurring at all three of those, at the ends and the center on every single joint, that's a bad sign. That tells me that the structure is about to go and we need to get out of there. If I see cracks developing only one area but not in the other area, that tells me, well, something's happening, but I don't know what. I need to do some additional testing. So planters and water, those are the two sources that cause problems with parking structures. What's the plan of action? So the plan of action is They come to me and the first thing I have to do is I have to tell them, well, do you stay in or do you get out? Well, first thing we do is we do a site visit. We got to take a look at it. And that's me personally coming out and looking at it. And this is a matter of judgment. So from the site visit, I got to first see whether or not this is critical or not. If it's critical, the next step is I got to get them out of the building. That doesn't happen too often. It does, but not too often. If it's not critical, then we have to proceed to the next step. And the next step is we have to do a series of tests. What are the tests? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure the deflection. Because the deflection, when I showed you in the previous sketch, the deflection is going to tell me do I have a progressive collapse happening here, or is it just that the building is overstressed? Or do I just have water leaking in this building? So the first step is I'm going to measure deflection. How do I measure the deflection? I'm going to use a very sensitive instrument like a laser survey or a manometer, and I'm going to measure the deflections of these beams down to the tenth of an inch, and I'm going to plot them on a plan. From the deflection plot, the deflection plot is going to tell me, do I have a problem with the load? Sometimes what's happened on some of these buildings, believe it or not, the building is actually sinking. In other words, I've had situations where this column is actually going down and the whole structure is deflecting. And that happens. So it's not the fault of the load or the soil. Maybe there is no soil. It's just that the, there's a problem with the footing. So step number one, we do a deflection plot. Step number two, we do a leak detection. What is a leak detection? We do a series of tests to see whether or not we have water leaking anywhere inside the structure. Is water leaking causing that slab to be exposed to water? Uh, do we have excessive irrigation occurring up on top? I've had some of these parking decks which have trees up on top. They have planters. They've put a whole landscaping up there. Very beautiful but it causes all kinds of problems with the subterranean parking. So we do a deflection plot, we do a leak detection. Then the third step, depending on what we find from there, is we will do some structural analysis. Structural analysis means we're going to do some calculations, we're going to do some computer modeling, and we're going to see what the loads are. We're going to see if this structure is overstressed, maybe it was underdesigned. Uh, we're going to test the rebar. We're going to take a concrete core sample out. Uh, that's also done in step two. We'll take some concrete core samples and have them tested. I have a picture of a sample core, what that looks like. We drill a hole and we take a sample of the core out. In this case, in this particular example, the core that we took was already so badly cracked we couldn't use this sample. We had to take another sample from another area. But that's just an example of what we do. So we'll take a concrete core sample. Sometimes we'll even take a piece of rebar and we'll take a sample of it and we'll go test it. We want to see what the condition is of the concrete and the rebar in the structure. Some of these structures being <clears throat> more than 50 years old they may have deteriorated. After we do all of that, then we will come back to you with a report with a set of conclusions and either we will recommend that the structure be retrofit or we will say everything is okay, just monitor it. 
I haven't had one that I've had to condemn. That hasn't happened recently. I'm not saying it can't happen, but it hasn't happened recently. Usually a retrofit or it's okay. But we have to do these tests. We have to come out and take a look at it. I can't just look at the building and make a conclusion. I don't have that ability. I have to have some test data. Just the same way as if you're feeling sick and you go see your doctor, the doctor should be doing some tests before they tell you what they're going to do. That's what, exactly what I have to do. And the reason I bring this to your attention is that concrete parking structures, there are thousands of them in California, actually all across the U.S., and they are all having these kinds of problems. I'm seeing this on a very regular basis, and so I've put this educational video out for you to learn about it and know what the process is, so that at least you're better informed and you can make better decisions. What you don't want to do is jump right into step number four, which is a retrofit with a budget. And I see this happening a lot where owners will immediately jump into a repair scheme when they haven't done any diagnostic testing. They haven't bothered to try to figure out what is the source of the problem. It's important to first identify the source of the problem before you can identify a solution to that problem. If you haven't identified the source, you can't be identifying a solution. That's an important step, and that's where the engineering part comes in. I hope you found this useful, and I hope that this will uh, enlighten you further, and uh, we can be of assistance to you to help you to look at your structure, and I hope you walk away from this with a little bit more knowledge about this topic. Thank you so much.